Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. When it comes to camera settings, there are a ton of articles, podcasts, and videos available that are all focused on the best camera settings to enable for this genre of photography or maybe that genre of photography. But in this episode, I want to discuss the camera settings to avoid, or I guess stated differently, the, the camera settings you might want to turn off for landscape photography. At least these are the things that I always turn off immediately upon arrival of a new camera body. And, and in my experience, all but one of the camera settings mentioned in this video could potentially ruin your images. And that one camera setting, well, it, it might not ruin a photograph, but it could certainly drive you absolutely insane. Now, of course, all camera bodies and brands and, and systems and styles are a bit different, but from my knowledge, all of the settings mentioned in this video are available to be turned off in the vast majority of the camera systems sold today. So in pretty much any camera body that I have owned over the last, uh, I don't know, four or five years, I always kind of turn off the same uh, six or I think it's seven, actually seven camera settings. And I've tried many of them before and I, I seem to have been burned by them all in, in some capacity here or there. But uh, the very first one, and these are not ranked in any specific order of severity or anything like that. This is a completely random order. But one of the very first things that I like to turn off is uh, continuous autofocus. I never want my, my focus uh, or my camera to be constantly focusing on a scene. I want to be able to lock focus one time, single, single focus, and then that's it. I don't want to, to lock focus and then have my camera hunting for, for something moving throughout my scene because landscape photography, for the uh, for at least for, for the style of photography I do, there's there's very little movement. You know, I'm not doing wildlife photography, so I don't need continuous autofocus on. So I always want to turn that off. Well, speaking of being burned by things, the forecast this morning was calling for a, a high probability of uh, a fog, but no fog, as you can see. So uh, that is a little bit disappointing. That was really the sole reason I came to this specific location, but there is some nice color in the sky, but I've never found a composition in this uh, location that could really utilize the, the sky. It's kind of a dense woodland area, but nevertheless, the, the second camera setting that I always turn off, and this is a little bit of a contentious topic, I suppose, because there's I, I know quite a few photographers that do use this and I've tested it out before and it's kind of burned me a couple times, but it's uh, auto ISL and from, Oops, I hit my mic. Hope that didn't mess anything up. But from my experience, it always, uh, and I've done this on multiple camera bodies, uh, the camera always selects a ISO level that is higher than, than I would have selected or a, a, a level that is higher than I think is needed for that uh, particular scene. And I'm a little bit of a control freak when it comes to camera settings. And I like to have con complete control over everything. I would be apt for um, or up for auto ISO if I was more confident in it, but it's one of those scenarios. I just, I just don't think it's worth risking to, you know, travel to a location, capture an image that you absolutely love to get it back home and realize that it's extremely noisy. And and it did not require an auto ISO level as high as the camera selected. So I always turn off auto ISO and leave my camera in, uh, in full manual mode. And I just pick the, uh, the ISO level for the particular scene manually. Now this next one, it's a biggie, and it's basically turning off the autofocus or removing the autofocus uh, trigger from the shutter release and moving it to a button on the back. It's also commonly referred to as back button focusing, and it, it really is a game changer because when, when you don't do that, when and cameras don't ship that way either, I wish they would, but when, when you receive a new camera body, the autofocus mechanism is also tied to the shutter release here. And every time you half press that shutter release, the camera uh, automatically focuses and then you press it down the other half of the way and then it takes the exposure but what happens sometimes is if you have both of those uh, events on one button when you have your your composition framed up and you go to take your your exposure you're also focusing briefly and then it takes the exposure and sometimes that can create focus drift or focus shift and it can cr also it can just it, ruin a photograph honestly but when you remove it and you put it on a button on the back then your uh, shutter release and the actual focusing are two completely separate buttons you don't have to worry about those uh, those focus misses so uh, enable or turning off the uh, the focusing from the shutter release and moving to a button on the back is uh, something that I, I would highly recommend and if you've never tried it before definitely give it a try and uh, see if it's something that uh, works for you it's definitely worked for me and worked for for many other photographers that I speak to as well 
And I tell you what, when you get that first little glimpse of fall weather, there is just something so rejuvenating and, and just, it's, it's, I don't know, it's like you're born again almost. Just the energy level just goes through the roof. It's hard to keep a, a smile not on your face. It's just like life is good. Everything is just, uh, is just feeling better. I don't know if that's just from spending uh, two months or, or three months of just a brutal heat, but uh, whatever it is, man, life, life is nice right now with uh, this nice uh, cool fall mornings. But the, the, the fourth camera, is this the fourth one? Yeah, the, the fourth camera setting that I always turn off are the, the special picture profiles. So pretty much uh, all cameras nowadays have these uh, picture profiles you can select, whether it's a landscape or, or a vivid or you know saturated or punchy or, or whatever the case may be. But uh, I always leave my picture profiles on standard or flat because I want to be able to capture as much dynamic range as I possibly can in a, a raw format. So always keep these, uh, these picture profiles turned off. Uh, most cameras, when uh, the only way to enable a picture profile is when you're shooting JPEG, which I always turn that off as well. I always want to shoot in raw. But um, even if I am shooting in JPEG in the very, very rare occurrence, I still have those uh, picture profiles put in a standard or a flat format or a flat profile. Now this next one is a biggie, mainly because I'm always shooting on a, uh, on a tripod, am I focus? Yeah. And uh, it's basically to turn off uh, in-body image stabilization. Since I'm always on a tripod, I don't need to have in-body image stabilization turned on. I did assign it to a button up here on the top of my camera, so I can quickly turn, turn uh, IBIS on. If for whatever case I am handheld, I want to be able to, to uh, enable that quickly. I don't want to have to like dive into menu systems to try and find that. I can just hit this button and in-body image stabilization is instantly turned on. But since I would say, 80% of the time I'm on a tripod, so I don't want that always enabled. It can cause some, some issues sometimes, even if you're on a tripod and you have IBIS enabled, you can get these kind of jitters, or your camera is trying to stabilize and it can, it can ruin a photograph, but what's so dangerous about it is you really can't tell that in camera. So, I mean, you could go on an entire shoot with IBIS turned on, shooting on a tripod, you're reviewing your images on the back of your camera, everything looks rosy. You get home, you start to review your images and you zoom in and they look just a little bit soft. And a lot of times that's because you had IBIS enabled while you're shooting on a tripod. So I always assign that to a custom button. That way it's super simple for me to be able to turn IBIS on or turn it off. All right, are you ready for the one that'll drive you just absolutely crazy? This one right here will not ruin a photograph um, in any way, shape, or form, but it will drive you absolutely crazy. It will ruin the, the ambiance of what you're doing. And if you happen to be shooting with anybody else, it will drive them crazy as well. And this is what it is. Or this, the dreaded one here. And what it is is basically just turning off all the beeps. Cameras today have so many beeps, but thankfully now you can, you can turn them off. You have beeps for your focus beeps. Then you also have beeps for the, the uh, self timer, which is always the, the most uh, annoying of them all and the loudest and the most ear piercing. But the good thing is, is you can go in and you can turn all these off. You can even turn off the, the shutter sound. There's a, a lot of different uh, sounds that you can enable if for whatever reason you'd want to, but there's also a lot of them that to, or all of them that you can turn off. So I would highly recommend turning off all of the, the beeps because at the end of the day, one of the best things about uh, outdoor and landscape photography is you're out in the great outdoors and the birds, the little bit of breeze blowing through the, the leaves and the trees, that's what it's all about. And to ruin that with these just annoying beeps on a camera is just sheer bananas to me. So I always, always, always turn off any kind of noise that could come from my camera. Well, today's not going to be the day either. There's this, there's this tree. This, it's not a super interesting tree, but it's kind of swoops over. And this time of year, the sun rises right between these three branches and you can get a really cool sun star if the, uh, the conditions are, are right. I was, uh, there are some of the, some of the maples are starting to, to change color here a little bit, but like I mentioned earlier, I was looking for a little bit of that fog, but these are definitely not the conditions to, uh, to, to capture this. I haven't even taken an exposure of this scene yet because it's, it's going to look like every other attempt. But this is a, one of those locations. It's close to my house. It's just your everyday woodland area. It's kind of a, a chaotic mess. It's just real thick underbrush everywhere. So it's not super photogenic, but I've got this, this vision in my mind of this tree with this sun star and foggy uh, scenario with a little bit of the early fall color coming in. And uh, I've tried many, many times and I haven't gotten all the, all the elements to come together just yet, but uh, it doesn't keep me from trying. One day I'll get it. And uh, 
it won't be that exciting either because it's really nothing super great. But it's just a reason to get out in this crisp uh, early fall weather and, uh, you know, just get out with the camera and, and uh, just enjoy the, uh, the birds and the noises and, and not the beeps in the camera. Now, I had said earlier that these, uh, these seven camera settings were not in any specific order of severity, but this seventh one actually is in the appropriate order because it is the one that probably impacts me the least because I don't really do this type of photography too often where it, uh, this really impacts me, but I always turn it off anyway, and it's long exposure noise reduction. And there might be some cameras out there that are really good at doing this, but uh, I always turn it off because I don't want my camera doing or being in charge of uh, any noise reduction at all. I want to be able to do that in uh, in my post processing process, I'm, I'm certain that that Photoshop or, or Lightroom or Capture One probably has better uh, noise algorithms to uh, reduce it and clean a file a little bit better than a camera can do it in body. So I don't want the camera to, to fuss around with that at all. I want to be in charge of all that when I get back into the editing editing suite. And if an image is noisy, I want to be able to manually remove that noise uh, using, like I mentioned, Photoshop, Capture One, uh, Lightroom, whatever uh, editing suite that you happen to use. But I always turn off long exposure noise reduction. So those are the seven camera settings that I always turn off every time I get a new camera body. And uh, I hope that uh, you're able to uh, pick up uh, at least one uh, interesting piece of information that you might want to turn off in your camera body as well. Before I do wrap up this week's video though, I just want to say a huge thank you to the longtime sponsor of the channel, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio design and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends and page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video. If you did enjoy it, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like I mentioned earlier, I really do hope that you were able to pick up at least uh, one of these camera settings that maybe you haven't thought about turning off or maybe it was the beeps and you didn't even realize how annoying they actually are. But uh, whatever the case may be, I hope there's at least well, one piece of a helpful information that you got out of this week's episode that you can apply to your photography moving forward as well. Uh, as always, thank you so much again for carving out a, a little bit of time in your Wednesday or whatever day you happen to be watching this to, uh, to spend it with me. And uh, I will see you all next week. Bye.